yourselfers and carnivores. Today I have a great survival food that is perfect for the carnivore diet and it's perfect to have around for emergency situations. And it's called pemmican. Pemmican is a Native American invention or creation and the Native Americans would take whatever wild meat they had at the time. Uh, I think it originally started mostly with bison, but you can use bison, venison, or any type of game meat. But more commonly now in modern times, people use beef. What's great about pemmican is that it keeps amazingly well. And I've seen people who have said that they have stored their pemmican for over 10 years in a cool cellar and then eaten it and was perfectly fine. There's a lot of different ways to enjoy pemmican. You can make pemmican into bars that you can use as sort of a hiking snack or just an emergency food. I'm actually planning on making this batch right now because I wanna have some pre-made bars for when we're going on a trip. I'm not sure when I'll have access to good quality foods and I want this for the plane. I'm also gonna be bringing some of my meat chips. See, you can check out the link right there. Not only can pemmican be made into bars and eaten as is, but a lot of people use it just for long-term storage and then they cook it into other foods. So you can use pemmican in soups and stews and things like chili and it's supposed to be delicious. Now I've only ever eaten it as is. I haven't tried making it into a chili or a stew just because I've been following the carnivore diet lately and I just haven't felt the need to try it. But a lot of people don't like the taste of pemmican. They don't like the texture. And so they prefer eating it in those ways. I have a special place in my heart for pemmican because it's what actually brought me to the carnivore diet. And the carnivore diet has brought me a lot of healing. You could see some of my videos there. But one of the reasons I found it is we were hearing a lot of things on the news about how are we going to have problems getting supplies in our area? Even in Germany nearby, they were saying on the news for people to have food stored for a certain amount of time. But then I thought, well, what happens if we run out of electricity? And how are we going to cook this food? And how are we going to keep it and preserve it? And so I started looking into things and I found pemmican kind of by accident in a survival book. And I thought, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could just live on pemmican? Because it has a great amount of meat and protein and fat. When I did a bit of an investigation, I realized that there were people who were living amazingly well and actually much better just eating beef, salt, and water. And I found it so interesting, and that's how I learned about the world of the carnivore diet. It was mostly meat preparing for some sort of emergency Armageddon. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be dehydrating the meat and then we grind it up and we mix it with a rendered fat like tallow. I'm using my homemade tallow and again you can see how to make your own tallow up here. I like to make it in big batches and then I pour it into my soap loaf molds and then I vacuum seal it and then I freeze it. So I have tallow that keeps amazingly well for quite a long time. And I use tallow for so many things. It's wonderful for my skin, for my nails, even put it in my hair to add a little bit of shine. And it's great for high temperature cooking. I like to cook my meat in a little bit of tallow. Normally, I would choose the same fat for the type of meat I'm using. It will generally keep better with tallow than with bacon fat or lard. But you can experiment, especially if it's not something that you're trying to keep for 10 decades for an emergency situation. Now, for some reason, I absolutely love pemmican. I find it strangely addictive. I don't know why, but I just, I really like it. Really, the only ingredients you need are beef and beef fat. Now you want to render it so you end up with beef and tallow. 
I like to add salt to mine. I like the flavor it gives. And I'm assuming that it would probably also allow for the pemmican to keep even longer as salt has its own preserving properties. Uh, a lot of people think that it adds better flavor and they think that it adds more nutrition to add things like dried berries. So you could also consider adding some sort of dried berry to yours, dried cranberries, raspberries, blueberries, or even raspberry or blueberry powder. I used to buy a lot of organic dried berry powders to add to flavor my homemade kombucha. And that works really well. And if you like the flavor that it gives something like pemmican, you can consider doing something like that. I think some people even add nuts and spices. So it really is up to you what you want to add. I have been avoiding nuts and seeds because I've had issues with oxalates. And so I keep my diet very low in oxalates. And again, I'm mostly following a carnivore diet these days. And lately I've been making it even a bit stricter to see what happens when I'm really mostly only eating beef and salt. So this is actually a perfect snack for me right now. And that's why I'm gonna make it. You wanna choose a really lean cut of meat. And I know that that goes against what most people in the carnivore community want. They're looking for those really fatty cuts of meat. But that's great for grilling. But when we're looking to preserve something like pemmican, you want something lean because we're gonna be drying this and dehydrating it. And while the fat will cook and you can eat it perfectly fine once you've dehydrated it, that's what happens when you make the meat chips that have fat in them. The fat isn't fully rendering like the fat in tallow. And so when you make pemmican and you grind up that not fully cooked fat and it's mixed with everything else and it can cause your whole batch of pemmican to go rancid more quickly. So it's preferable to use a very lean cut of meat and you want to cut as much of the fat off as you can and then we're going to be drying that and not to worry this will have plenty of fat in it because we'll be adding a 50-50 ratio more or less of the dehydrated beef, and the melted tallow. This provides lots of energy, lots of nutrition, and it's just perfect for emergency situations. I like to get the, the thinnest cuts of meat that I can find. I've tried a lot of different methods for getting this to dry as quickly as possible. Uh, one of the best ways I've found is to start to dry it and when it's dehydrated a little bit on the outside but not on the inside, it's not as difficult to cut. And so I can take a knife and slice it in half throughout and I get two thin fillets and I put the inside up on top so that it will dry more quickly. And that works amazingly well. You can also take a meat tenderizer mallet and just really pound it as thinly as possible. And that will give you the most surface area to get it to dry as quickly as possible. If you have a dehydrator like I do and a food processor like I do, this is really simple to make. If you're in a wilderness situation, the Native Americans did not have it quite as nicely as I do. You really want to pound it as thinly as possible and hang it to a sun dry. And you want this to get as dry as possible so it'll keep as well as possible. You really want this meat to be bone dry and brittle and I will show you when we get to that point. For now, we're just going to start dehydrating the meat. So right now I'm just going to put the meat on the trays. You want to keep them separated and just like this. Okay, I now have the meat that is fully dried. Uh, I like it to be brittle and so that you can just, you can break it. It's no longer flexible. That allows me to know that it is fully dry and that it will keep much longer. While there are other ways to preserve this longer, and if you do make several batches, then you might want to start considering vacuum sealing it, and you can even freeze it. 
I really don't know how many hours I had this going because I put the dehydrator on and then I had forgotten to make the meat chips so I started making those and I left it go for several hours and then I turned it off and I left them in the hot dehydrator overnight. So that also helps to dry it further. What I usually do is just check on it every once in a while and if I see that the meat pieces are still flexible then I continue to dry it until I'm happy with the way it is. What I'm going to do now to make this go really easily is I am going to break this up into smaller pieces that fit well and can be reached by the blade of my food processor. And I'm going to use the food processor to grind this up into somewhat of a powder. It will get kind of fluffy and you'll notice the meat fibers in it. But what we want this is to be really small and then we will combine it with the melted tallow. As you can see, it's now ground into a fine powder and now I'm going to be melting some tallow and mixing it with this powder to make my pemmican. I normally don't weigh this out. I normally just eyeball it, but for the purposes of this video and for the post so that people can know an exact number to use if they prefer, I am going to be using a one-to-one -one ratio and seeing how that works. So I weighed out the finished meat right now, the dried meat, and I had about 220 grams. I started out with about 770 grams of meat. And I may or may not have had a bite or two along the way of the dried meat to see how it was, but not much. So. You can figure about a third, a little bit less than a third of the weight of the dried meat from what you started with. And that is consistent with what happened with the meat chips. With the meat chips, I was really careful not to eat any until I weighed them out. And it was just under a third of the original weight once I dried them. I'm going to be melting in this pot. So I'm going to tear my scale with this pot on and add about 220 grams of tallow and see where that brings us. Okay, it looks like my tallow is still a little bit frozen. You have to be careful not to cut yourself when you're cutting the tallow when it's really hard like this. I'm gonna be melting this down and then I'll show you the process of mixing it together. Gently heat the tallow over low to medium heat until it's completely melted. I've now melted my tallow and I'm going to be mixing it in together with the beef powder. Before I start molding it, I want to show you some different options you can use for making different types of pemmican. In the past, I have generally molded it by using either soap molds to make really convenient easy bars, or I have also used a loaf mold. This is actually a soap mold too, so it's a little bit sturdier and it's a little bit straighter. But you can also use any sort of loaf mold that you have. And if you're not using something like silicone, you want to line it with something like parchment paper. And that will keep the pemmican from sticking so that you can easily remove it and store it however you like. For travel, because I know I'm going to be eating these pemmican bars just as they are, as sort of a protein bar, a meat bar, I am going to try a new method that I haven't used before. And I'm going to see what happens if I just roll it out into a thin sheet on some baking paper and then later cut it into really thin bars. I could also just press it into this more thinly, but here I only have seven compartments and I will probably be wanting to make more than seven bars depending on how much I can get out of this. So this will be a good trial to see how well this works. Pour the melted tallow into the meat powder and mix it in until it's thoroughly combined. The mixture should somewhat resemble a wet sand consistency. I now have all of my ingredients incorporated together. The one-to-one -one ratio worked out really well and it's very similar to what I normally did. And I normally didn't measure my salt out either, but today for the purpose of the recipe, I added a teaspoon and that was just about right for me. So this is going to be the first time that I try making this on a baking sheet. So we'll see how this works. 
I'm going to pour this out into the baking sheet and then just use my spatula to spread it out. I did bring a rolling pin just in case. For now, I'm just gonna eyeball this and see, I may not even use the rolling pin because this really levels out quite nicely on its own and you can just press it into place and it seems like it's getting very flat. I will try to make borders to this so that I have a relatively flat and square bar when I'm finished. That's all there is to it. I am now just gonna allow these to cool. I just allow it to cool at room temperature, but if you wanna speed things up, you can stick this on a tray and stick it in the fridge or the freezer. And then I will be cutting it into bars and show you how the final product turned out. In the end, I changed my mind about leaving this to cool at room temperature because I was in a bit of a hurry. I wanted to finish recording. And I realized that I had these wonderful stainless steel trays that I bought for my air fryer. They were the perfect size for what I had just eyeballed into a rectangular shape. So you can see my pemmican is now hard and I can just peel it off the paper like that. Slice the bars carefully so that your bars don't break. The pemmican can be kind of crumbly, so you just want to be a little bit careful. You can always try to press the bars together again if they start to fall apart a little bit. And that's all there is to it. I have these wonderful pemmican bars that I can now bring with me on my travels or store for hiking or snacking, just whenever I want it. I think what I will do is the ones that I want to keep at home, I will be wrapping them individually in a sort of parchment paper that I have. And the ones that I want to bring on my travel, I will probably vacuum seal just because we are going to be going on a cruise. I don't really want it for the cruise itself. I want them for the plane ride home. I'm going to take a bite so you can see. Some people don't enjoy pemmican, but I find it really delicious. I really like it. I don't think it needs any sort of honey, nuts, or berries. I've seen that some of the other carnivore bloggers are promoting a type of meat bar. And this is just an easy way to make something like that yourself. And it's a lot cheaper. I looked those up and they were quite pricey. And the thing that I like about making this sort of thing yourself is that you can ingest the amount of salt and you can make it to your liking. So I hope you enjoyed this recipe. I really love it. If you liked it, please give this video a like and I would love for you to subscribe to my channel for more great recipes like this one. Until next time.